please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be reading and examining and contemplating today. Be a Berean. Did you read at least the proverb today? Hmm? Read along with me. Because as you know, as I always tell you, and you have, and you know this, my mouth can go quicker than my brain. Please. Get the book. This isn't for your entertainment. This isn't for your amusement. Let's search the scriptures together. Got uh, something for you today. But I want us to touch on a couple verses before we begin. Because this is basically going to be the theme, as it were, for this week. As it were. As the Lord leads and guides. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 to start. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Now you got to remember, this isn't necessarily talking about a physical finance. Okay? The riches of heaven who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Precious. Precious. Okay? Oh, the depth of the riches. Okay? And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, anti-Semitic individuals such as the bloke and many other people like Stephen Anderson in the Roman Catholic Church, uh, they will come to a verse like this and they will end also the black Hebrew Israelites. Boy, they're, they're, they're a piece of work, I'll tell you that. They'll come to this and they will attack the Hebraic Jewish people because of it. Um, replacement theology is exactly that. Uh, teaching that one has replaced the other. Uh, Roman Catholicism is replacement theology. They teach you that the Roman Catholic Church is Israel. <laughs> Stupid. No, it is not. No, it is not. Um, Stephen Anderson uh, teaches replacement theology that uh, God is done with the Jews and now it's the church. Okay, Black Hebrew Israelites are replacement theology because they say that them being Hamites have replaced the Jews. Okay. And the lists go on and on and on. The Roman Catholic Church does not say we are Jews. But throughout all their teachings, they teach you that the church has replaced Israel. Okay? And if you've ever listened to anything that Sodomite Stephen Anderson has said, you know he is big time and all those IFB guys are usually anti-Semitic and replacement theology. Okay? Okay? And looking across in Revelation chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and try them that dwell upon the earth. See, the minute you start saying that, you know, God is done with the Jews and the Hebraic Jews, okay, um, you're, you're treading on dangerous water. Dangerous water. This whole satanic period of Lent is a reflection of a deeper thing which has its roots in replacement theology. Anti! 
to be against and to replace. Okay? All right? Today, we're going to be in Judges chapter 9. And we are going to exposit verses 7 on to verse 15. Unless YouTube wants to take down another video. <laughs> they take down a video, rabbit here. They took down a video recently for medical misinformation. When the whole psychological operation run by the Jesuit order was in full swing, known as the Poison Crown, um, and they were pushing the steel of the Jesuit poniard, um, very few people talked about it. There were some out there who brazenly, in plain, plain English, um, were, were using the phrases. And remember, you got to remember that the sacred cow of the Jesuits is the poison crown. You look those words up in Latin, you'll know what I'm talking about. And recently YouTube took down a video uh, citing medical misinformation. Like, whatever, whatever. Here's the thing. And I had people attack me on this. But like one of my enemies uh, said to me once, uh, not to me directly, but made the comment, and I think it was my uh, <laughs> dear sunken-eyed uh, Canadian friend, but uh, I think it was he who even said, we all know who you're talking about. Why don't you just say his name? That whole time of when the, when the Poison Crown psychological operation was going on a couple years ago, I purposely spa spake in ambiguity. Okay? I purposely did that. All right? Purposely. All right? I did. I spake in ambiguities. Purposely. But yet, yet, like uh, I think it was, I think it was uh, the the guy from Canada who said that to me, said that about me. It's like they got, and many people, it's like Brad. We all know what you're talking about. Why don't you just? Apparently, I don't need to, do I? Do I? Because uh, and YouTube has done this. They've taken down a few videos quote, citing medical misinformation. And, it's like, and feedback is is pointless. It, you know, it, it's, yeah. I purposely spake in ambiguities. Uh, but yet, it's funny, funny, they all knew what I was talking about. And that's something. <laughs> a little rabbit for you. I, there are a couple guys out there who really is like, you're a coward, blah, blah, blah. Well, apparently they still got what was being said, even though I used ambiguous language. <laughs> Are you hungry? Hmm. Are you hungry? If you had enough milk toast, huh? Go watch the villain from Dudley Do Right, who's basically a copy and paste individual, or the ramblings of some obsessive little psychotic. 20-year-old punk, huh? Mm. Or uh, some guy named Jack who needs to be smacked, huh? Huh? You hungry? Are you hungry? You had enough uh, processed milk, huh? Today, if you got, by the way, a ribbon marker, you might want to use it. This, uh, this video is going to be meat. Okay, we got meat today. All right? What does that mean? This is going to be in depth. All right, we're going to go through a lot of scripture today. So if you're looking for something just to pacify your, your whimsical little thing of being a muse, go somewhere else. Now, somewhere on the channel, somewhere, somewhere, <laughs> I'm sure the bots at YouTube could find it if they wanted, but somewhere on the channel um, that the Lord has given your servant, we did a video on Judges 9 before. But we didn't, in that, I remember this, we didn't go into the trees. We didn't get specific in these verses as we are today. That's what we're going to be doing today. Okay? So, without further ado, Judges chapter 9. We will be reading verses 7 on to verse 15. 
but we're going to have a few stops along the way. Judges 9, verse 7. And when they told it to Jotham, he went out, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, lifted up his voice and cried, and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. Verses 8 and 9. The trees. Now stop. Stop. As you read the parable of Jotham, it is obvious that the trees that he is mentioning, right, the trees went forth, the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. Hmm. So the trees are a reference unto persons, spirit, soul, and body. Within scripture you see many references onto things like such as mountains. Okay, mountains as being symbolic and a metaphor for people. Okay, another one that is clear is Revelation 17 where the horse sits upon many waters, and then you read Revelation 17, verse 15, uh, Scripture tells you that the waters there that are being talked about are nations, tongues, and peoples. Okay? You see our Lord in Scripture use that kind of phraseology, using objects, uh, trees, mountains, waters, as to describe persons. Okay? You see that through Scripture quite a bit. You've got to remember that. Okay? So, verse 8 again. The trees, Jotham is making reference unto the people, went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, olive tree, reign thou over us. Verse 9. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor First God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees. Olive tree. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. You were warned. We got a lot of scripture. Genesis chapter 8, verses 6 on to verse 12. Olive. Olive. Significance. Genesis 8, verse 6 on to verse 12. After the flood. After the flood. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Raven was an unclean bird. The ravens which gave food to Elijah. Okay? At this time, the law was not written yet. And the dietary things were not established as of yet. Okay? But going forward, we know that the raven was an unclean bird. Okay? And it was interesting because the unclean birds, the ravens, gave bread to Elisha. Elijah, excuse me. Interesting. Interesting. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 9. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in, to, in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet, another, yet other seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. An olive leaf. Okay? You check scripture. You check your strongs. Or the King James Bible online thing. It's the first reference. Okay? If I'm wrong, I'll be corrected. But. And at evening, 
And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more, because the waters were abated. The symbology here, the significance of the olive leaf, okay, the significance of that we will address later, uh, actually in verse 10. Okay, so remember the thing about the olive leaf. This right here is also a symbol of the grace of God after judgment. Okay, after judgment. The dove, the dove. Significance about the dove, okay? John chapter 1, John chapter 1, okay? And this is where these wicked Catholics who teach you a three-person God, uh, love to go to this to, uh, to show you that the, 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 what they call the Holy Ghost is a little bird that flies around and poops on you or some nonsense. John, oh, and here, let me make myself, my position very well known about the Trinity. I spit on your Trinity, okay? Just so you know. John chapter 1, verses 29 on to verse 34. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred for me. For he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, John bare record, pay attention. I saw the capital S spirit descending from heaven like a dove. Like a dove like a dove descending okay descending from heaven like a dove like a, do a dove dive bombing okay if you ever watch the dove flying around and how they go down and stuff like that okay and it abode upon him this is where catholics come up with the little you know the the uh, Eye of Horus Triangle, the old guy and the young guy and the bird up there. Totally satanic, totally wicked, okay? It's just the devilment, but this, kind of, this is, and this is elsewhere I'll mention in scripture, this is where they get the idea, they try to teach you that the third person of the Trinity <coughs> is a bird. Nonsense, okay? Like a dove. Didn't say it was a dove. Did it? No. Descended like a dove. Well, why did it say like an eagle or something? I don't know. I don't know. Okay? But it's referencing how the Holy Ghost descended. That's all. Okay? That's, that's all. <laughs> all right? Let's keep reading. And I knew him not but he sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending. This is why our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was baptized. And why this whole thing went on to identify to John and to Israel that, ah, that's him. That was like, hey, hello, here I am. Okay, that was the, to identify the Mashiach. Okay, none of this heretical that Jesus was just a normal guy and then became God because that's, that's nonsense. That, that's heresy. Okay, no, no, no. This was a thing of identification linked with baptism. Remember that. Water baptism is an identification. It is not salvation, you heretics. Okay? And I knew him not. 
But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit cap lust descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Okay? Again, water baptism is not salvific you heretics. Okay? It is a outer profession of an inner conversion. It is an outer testimony. Okay? It is a public identification. It is not salvation. Okay? Catholics, um, uh, Pentecostals, uh, Campbellites, uh, Lutherans, okay, teach that water baptism is salvific. No, it is not. No, it is not. Okay? It is not. It is not. Now, the olive leaf, again, as we mentioned in uh, Genesis chapter 8, again, is symbolic, a symbol of God's grace after judgment. Okay? But, also, Exodus, Exodus 27, Exodus 27, verses 20 under verse 21. Exodus chapter 27, verses 20 under verse 21. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light. Cheer God and man. Now in our text, in verses 8 and 9 in Judges, God and man is first. Okay? God and man is first. Okay? The dove, the symbology of the Holy Ghost descending, okay, all right, and the leaf, a covering, we're going to address that in the next verse, okay, a symbol of God's grace, okay, uh, listen you free grace heretic devils, God's grace is in every dispensation, okay, it is, salvation changes in every dispensation, you idiot, okay, but let's continue, okay, let's continue. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Ah. Synagogues, today, uh, they, they use electricity now, most of them. But there was always a light burning. Supposed to be a light of a continual burning. You know, they do that for that... Uh, uh, for that uh, JFK with his grave, uh, the, uh, JFK's eternal flame, a mockery, okay, all right? But a light to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generations, unto their generations, their generations, okay? Things have changed in this dispensation, okay? There, th things are done totally different in this dispensation, okay? You've got to remember that. Uh, their generations, remember that, on the behalf of the children of Israel. And like I said, you've ever been to a synagogue, usually some of them will have a, uh, uh, a fire burning before you enter into the sanctuary or whatever. But uh, a lot of them that I have seen have like had the, uh, the, the McHenry County Jewish congregation, they have a little light bulb that's always burning there. Reference on to this. But in verse 20, pure oil olive beaten for the light. To cause the lamp to burn always. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word. Yes. And God said. God said. Let there be light. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. The Godhead in action, not the Trinity, okay? Not the sick, disgusting, um, vomitous, fecal Trinity. Yes, you heard me right, okay? All right? 
In the beginning was the Word, capital W. One of seven times that capital W appears in Scripture. Every single one is a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You have an NIV. You have an ESV. You have a New American Standard. There's only six mentions of capital W Word because they take out the verse about the Godhead, the Johannian comma, 1 John 5, 7. Okay? So, let's continue. In the beginning was the Word, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word made flesh. Not the flesh made the Word, you devils. Watch out for that subtle thing. These guys you who worship the skin suit. They, they twist it. And they go on the rampage because they, they work for Satan. So, you know, it's like, to these guys, the flesh became the Word. No, the Word became flesh. Get it right, you idiots. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. God said, okay, same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. God said, let there be light. Okay? Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Word made flesh. This is very simple stuff. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. You're alive today because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has allowed it. And the life was the light of men. Always burning. The reference to Exodus 27, 20 onto verse 21. A lamp burning. As long as you're alive, you see this in photographs where you see they, they, they take a picture and their eyes look bright. You know, like almost a reflection, uh, uh, like a, a, a car coming at you, like a pretty titty cat. You know, their eyes glow. That's that symbol of light, life, that is in you of the Lord. A dead person, a dead body, when they, they photograph the eyes of the dead, that light is not in the eye. Okay? That's what that's talking about. And that's the tie-in significance of all this. Let's continue reading. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And also, too, i got to mention, this does not mean that everybody who is alive is saved and has the Lord in them. Everybody who is alive has the light in their eyes, life, because the Lord has given it to them. That's what that means. Okay? There was a man sent from God. His name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L, Light that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true capital L light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, that go through water and blood, the matrix of the woman, the water break, okay, and to be saved, okay, water and blood, get it, not water, baptism, okay? All right? So you're alive. You have light in your eyes, life. And that is because that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You're alive today because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has allowed it. Hey, atheist, it doesn't mean squat if you want to accept that or not. Them are the facts. Them are the facts. You'll deal with that at the great white throne. Okay, let's continue. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Hebraic Jews, taken out of Shem, not of Ham, not of Japheth. He came unto his own, the Hebrews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God's the one who does the saving, you stupid Calvinist. Yes. But see, 
you Calvinists make offer people a God who is a God of coercion who forces you to do it making you a robot that's not the God of the scriptures the Lord rebuke every single one of you disgusting Calvinists okay disgusting all right and the capital W how devils like this and the capital F flesh was made the word Judge not will be in the description box. Any one of you want to try to jump onto that old dead horse, watch the video and then shut up. Okay? And the Word was made flesh. Okay? The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the significant tie-in there also with the burning light at the tabernacle was Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? The Word became flesh. You could say God tabernacled. That's not scripturally written like that. But you could say that God tabernacled among men the scripture does not say God tabernacled among men no 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 but the tie in there with the uh, Old Testament uh, before the testimony of what we read in Exodus okay all right that's the tie in all right all right that's the significance of the olive tree okay now remember I told you about the olive leaf symbol of God's grace and a covering Judges 9, verse 10. And the trees, people, said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. The video that will be done tomorrow will be uh, showing you categorically that, number one, that Israel is the fig tree. Most people get that. But where a lot of people uh, go wrong as led at the behest of Rome is that they go to how the Lord cursed the fig tree and say, God's done with the tree. We will deal with that tomorrow. Okay, we will deal with that tomorrow. But today, verse 10 again, And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. The fig tree. Fig tree. Genesis chapter 3. In my opinion, one of the most important chapters in all of Scripture. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Also, first appearance of any variation thereof. Now the serpent, 1 on to verse 7. Saints, you know this. Now the serpent, the devil, that old serpent, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Thou wast in the Garden of Eden. In Ezekiel 28, it wasn't King Tyrus, it was the serpent Satan, Lucifer. Okay? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, woman, oh, we won't get off on that one. Yay! Hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And today, brethren, what are we dealing with? We are dealing with a whole lot of... Ye this whole stupidity of Lent, the, the, whole, the whole of Roman Catholicism, the whole of Calvinism, the whole of free grace-ism, and whatever ism or right you want to throw into that equation, what is it? Hath God said? In the Genesis, in the beginning, yea, hath God said. First thing that the serpent did was do what? Yea, hath God said. The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it. Uh, 
uh, look across to Genesis chapter 2 and you, you read verse 17, okay? Go ahead, pause it and read it, okay? But of uh, verse 3 in uh, chapter 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it. Where does he say that? He doesn't. Lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, <laughs> Ye shall not surely die. Now, before we continue, saints, you know this. Before we continue, the implication was that Eve was thinking that the death would be instantaneous and immediate. There was a spiritual death, but the physical death came almost for Adam almost a thousand years after the incident. Okay? Something died, spiritual, but also an animal. We'll get more, we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay? But the inference is that <coughs> they thought if they were to do this, they would die immediately. Spiritually, that happened. Physically, no, it didn't. And that's what Satan was banking off of. You're not going to die right away. Eventually, we all die, yes. Man was originally created to be immortal. But because they made a choice, See, and here's where, this is the stupidity of Calvinism, okay? They had free will in the Garden of Eden. But according to the Calvinists, their God is a God who coerces you. You Calvinists are stupid. You Calvinists are stupid. You really are. You really are. Anyway, let's continue. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But atheists. Uh, that everybody is their own God. They are their own standard. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know how Paul talks about, I judge not my own self? Because referencing to this he can't we can't know what is truly good and what is truly evil unless we have the lord within us and we have his word the authorized version and what does what does catholicism do yeah have god said well we don't really have a perfect you know they use the word bible i i refuse but uh we don't have a perfect bible and you're right there ain't no such thing as a perfect bible Scriptures are perfect. Yeah, they're a little dig at a lot of you. Okay? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, the day that you disobey, your, your eyes will be open and you'll be able to see. <laughs> yeah. And you'll be able to make your own decision. You are your own God. Because you know. You are your own. And see, an atheist <laughs> says, I they don't believe in a God. I don't believe in a God. You are your own God. Saints, any time you meet a professed atheist and it comes up, you throw that in his or her face. Don't be afraid and don't back down. Have the sword. If it comes up, take them here. Okay? This thing of an atheist is stupid. Absolutely stupid. There is no such thing as an eight they do not exist they do not exist okay they are their own god they are the fulfillment of verse five they are their own god throw it in the atheist's face if it ever comes up or if you're a little cantankerous like i am sometime bring it up to them okay <laughs> let the lord lead you of course obviously but, okay, don't, don't be afraid of that. Don't, brother, don't ever. Uh, of course, as the Lord guides you, but, you know, you're, you're dealing with Nathan. You, th you throw that in their teeth, okay? You throw that in their teeth. Yeah, and beat that horse. Tell the atheist, like, hey, you're your own God. You ain't no atheist. Shut up. Okay, let's continue. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, again, this whole idea of the visual stimuli, the copy and paste mentality. Hey, there's a guy who I think is a saint. <laughs> we won't get started on that. He has a certain look, so I'm going to copy and paste it to give off the appearance that I am. And uh, our dear brother Alexander tells a, tells a story about how someone, a relative or something of his, uh, I'm hazy on it, talks about a certain type of fruit that looks absolutely beautiful. And then you get it, and then you bite it, and it's like, Bleh! or like an apple. You can get some apples that are really beautiful, and then you squish it, and then all the gook comes out because it's on the outside, beautiful. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, some people will like to put the emphasis on what the actual fruit was. That is insignificant in light of, <laughs> and again, the dismantling of the stupidity of the free gracers who say it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Uh, this is works in the Garden of Eden. Works. Okay? They saw God in verse 8. Okay? It was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. And the fake gracer tells you it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. It's nonsense. It was works. It was works. Okay? It was works. The significance of the fruit is futile unto the fact that they did precisely what God said not to do. See, they swallow the gnat, they, they, um, um, they focus in, they strain at a gnat, excuse me, they strain at the gnat, but they swallow the camel. Okay? They strain at the gnat, well, it was a certain fruit that, doesn't, that died out in the flood. That may, may very well may be the case. But what was more significant was, God said, God said, verse 2, or verse uh, 17 in Genesis 2, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Again, where does he say don't touch it? Don't eat it. They did they did. That was the more significant thing. Strain it in that and get into it. I've seen this! Argument about what the fruit was. It was that fruit. we got to find that fruit. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're straining in a gnat and swallowing the camel, buddy. Okay? And again, it works. People, people, if you made it, people. Don't believe these free gracie idiots. They're devils. They're lying to you. They want to get you to go to hell. Okay? Stay away from them. They tell you that it was by grace through faith. At the, no. No. By grace through faith in this dispensation. Yes. In the entirety of Scripture. No. It's nonsense. Watch out for these guys. Verse 7. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. They sewed, they, okay, their eyes were open. And then they realized, hey, oh, hey, baby. <laughs> you know, I, 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 pick pick But that, that's like, whoa. We're naked. Come on. We have to do something to cover ourselves. You get it? The fig leaves. First appearance of the word fig mentioned with leaves. The olive leaf. Olive leaf that was brought to Noah by the dove. By the dove. The, uh, the Spirit of God descending like a dove. See the significance? fig leaves that they sowed. Do you get it? Do you get the comparison? Hmm? Do you get 
the fig leaves sewed by them to cover their perceived nakedness, which they were. And that nakedness was there, but it didn't affect them until they did what? Disobeyed. Proving what? It was works. See, see, the ignorance of the book is why these free gracers are able to get away with what they're getting away with. Okay? And they only give you four minutes, right, Jack? Yeah, they only give you four minutes, you, you, you know, that only you can handle, right? Yeah. yeah. But do you see the significance? The sowing of fig, fig leaves. They saw, oh, oh, we, we got to do something. So what do they do? Okay? And, now check this out. Check this out. Galatians chapter 4. Now, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, people. The whole of Scripture is written for you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, we got, I got, it, got it right here. But, it is not all written, addressed to you. It isn't. It isn't. And see, when you try to blend doctrine from under the law with doctrine today, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, and God is ashamed of you. Okay? All right? The way they were made right with God was not the same way in the Garden of Eden, the patriarchal period, and also during the law and today. Salvation. Grace is grace. Unmerited favor. The better blessing the lesser. Okay? That's there in every dispensation. Amen. That's not the argument. The argument is that salvation changes in the dispensation. Yeah. 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 And they say that we who rightly divide the word of truth are the heretics when they're saying, Yea, hath God said and guiding you to hell. But... Galatians 4, verses 21 and 31. Galatians 4, 21 on to verse 31. Now, check this out. No, remember the thing about the, um, about the two leaves that we looked at? The olive leaf brought to Noah by the dove, a symbol of God's grace. The fig leaves that they sewed together because they done messed up and they got to do something. Check this out. Check this out. Galatians 4, 21 under 31. Tell me, <laughs> he that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? Guys like Mark the Messenger. And all these guys, these, these idiots. It's like you got to keep the Ten Commandments. Dude, you couldn't do that if you tried. The only one who could do that happened to be God the Father. And hey, fledgling. That's that's what I was talking about. The Lord never sinned in that sinful flesh, you little idiot. You need to get to the book, boy. All right? Anyway, that was for someone special. Tell me, ye that desire to, to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman, Hagar, the Egyptian, and of course, Sarah, Sarah. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, took it upon themselves. You can read the whole thing about um, uh, Abraham and Hagar. God said, I'm going to give you an heir. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, were like, this is take, go, go, go get Hagar and give. Okay. They took it upon themselves instead of waiting for the inevitable promise. See the tie-in? Okay. Adam and Eve messed up. What do we got to do? We got to do something. The flood. After the flood. Here comes the dove with the olive leaf. Get it? Now see, you might want to strain at the gnat and swallow the camel. 
and focus in on the leaves themselves. Okay? Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? All right? See the forest for the trees. Okay? Please. Please. And see, it's that which these devils are banking on and you're following. So watch out. Think for yourselves, people. <laughs> All right. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. But he who was, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. And yes, Ishmaelites, yes, you're right. Your ancestor was the firstborn of Abraham. But in Isaac thy seed is called. Which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage. The bondage of the law which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Amen. Amen. Ishmael was born out of Abraham and Sarah taking it into their own hands to fulfill what God had said. Okay? All right? Isaac. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Abraham's seed will be in the description box for you. Okay? That's a two-part uh, video. Okay? That will be in the description box for you. Okay? Questions? Watch that. Or listen to it. Excuse me. All right. I just lost my place. Okay. Verse 29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the capital S spirit, even so is it now a... <laughs> All these fake preachers look at these guys these ites who are born who like I said copy and paste okay look at them they're after the flesh they're not after the spirit that what is described right there but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the capital S spirit, even so it is now. Right now, today, 2024, the fool's proverb, uh, 26th. Did you read the proverb today? Why not? Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son, the things that man does. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Now, see, a Calvinist will come to this and try to run their way in. But see, you got to remember the thing about Calvinism. Calvinism's God is a God that forces you to do things. The God is not a God of coercion. Okay? Now, easily debunk Calvinism. Like that. Show me where God forced somebody to do something. They go to Pharaoh. Instantly. 
Then you'd be like, uh, Pharaoh thought he was a god. His heart was already hardened. It's like in judo. You know, he let his hand along because he was already throwing a punch at him. Okay? But, no, that, 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 no, no. But that's what they do. They, they will instantly go to Pharaoh. He forced Pharaoh. Pharaoh already thought he was a god. Pharaoh was <laughs> like, like the bloke from England. He was <laughs> already gone. Can't come back. The impossible is possible with God. But probable, no. And God's not forcing anybody. Okay? Okay? Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. And flesh and blood cannot, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Spiritual. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, the one who takes it upon themselves to try to force their way into the kingdom of God, spiritual, but of the free. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to 29. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was that out. Oh, it was added because of trans. Oh, what was that? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is three. <laughs> you Trinitarians. I don't. Per se, blame you Christians who are Trinitarians. Because from the inception of the Roman Catholic Church, their number one thing that they did was what? One God in three persons. When you get guys like that stupid idiot Tom uh, and people like that who try to uh, you know, defend the three-person Trinity nonsense, those, those are the ones that we um, have to... Eh. Anyway... Anyway, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. What does that mean? The law protected your life because the law is like, hey, don't do that. Okay? And if you adhere to the law to abstain from that thing, obviously. Okay? But that life, that light, okay, that indwelling, okay, on a permanent basis, the law couldn't achieve that. Because the law is not a faith. Okay? The law you can read right here in Scripture. The faith was in God honoring you and you honoring the law. The law itself, you didn't need faith because it was written down for you. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. See, you lost people are going to be judged by the very law that Paul's talking about giving a reference onto. But see, when the Lord saves you, you go the way of the cross, the elect way of the cross, his way, you don't boot the door and climb up some other way, and he saves you, you're not under the law. Okay, You're under the law to Christ, which is found for us today in the Pauline epistles, primarily doctrine like that, but the law as far as the Ten Commandments... Uh-huh, you don't have to keep those. Because you couldn't anyway. Only one did. 
he happened to be God. Let's continue. For ye are all children by God of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, identified into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Hmm. Okay? Now, go back to Judges chapter 9, verse 11. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? We as the body of Christ, as the Hebraic Jews, serve a purpose. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 13. This is now the law. The law has been given. Okay? This is now the dispensation of the law here. All right? Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that, it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God, are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom, and your understanding, in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, Surely... This great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now look at that verse. How you serve the Lord reflects Him. And that right there crosses dispensational lines. Okay? And think about this. When you have a cross-dressing Calvinist, Okay, and you have these free gracers who live like the devil and just if just as if I any devilment. Well, they're giving a good example of their God, Satan. Okay? See, the Hebraic Jews under the law were to be a witness unto the nations. And, then they, and they weren't Jehos, by the way. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? And you look at the nonsense stupidity of, of the Roman Catholic Church, especially during this time of Lent, leading on to a start day. The way you serve the Lord reflects Him. That crosses dispensational lines. And, that's, and that is what was Israel's purpose, to be a, na a nation to be a witness and testimony unto the nations of how great the Lord is and of his grace and mercy. See, only take heed to thyself 
and keep thy soul diligently. Yes, because eternal security was not in the dispensation of the law, you lying twit, heretic devil. Yes. Yes. Keep your soul. Yes. In the dispensation under the law. Yes. Yes. By adhering to the law. Okay? Eternal security when saved, always saved, was not under the law. Don't believe these lying, heretic, free grace scumbags. Okay? All right? Please, for your own sake. Let's continue. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. We call this a dispensational difference. Lest thou forget thing, the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest unless they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near, and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire, unto the mist of the heaven, which with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the mist of the fire. Ye, uh, ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. <laughs> but yet there are some out there, these crazy Pentecostal twits. It's like, I've seen the Lord. No, you have not. No, you have not. <laughs> no, you have not. You've seen a devil. You've seen a devil. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them on upon two tables of stone. See, the law is not a faith. It was written down for him. Okay? Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 and verse 13 is imperative to show us that the Hebraic Jewish people were God's witnesses unto the nations. Crossing dispensational lines, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All right? 17 under 21. Therefore, if, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We're all, all, every single one of us saints, even you sisters, are in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? To it, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, just as the Hebraic Jews under the law were. How you serve the Lord reflects him. Why do you think he got so angry under the Old Testament? Huh? Why do you think he's so enraged today at what he, at what he perceives? And what is this nonsense called Christianity? Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That's a very important verse, showing you the way you serve God reflects Him. Look at the free gracers. Look at them. Look at them. What are they justifying? Sin. That cross-dressing Calvinist twit idiot. Okay, thankfully that, that idiot took out uh, the things that show his face. Okay, that's good. That's good. Go away. But see, these people say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And then they behave and act like a devil. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And here's what lost people have no concept of. Because the free gracer 
just believe and receive. It's yourself. Yourself doing it. Okay? <laughs> All right? And, of course, the Calvinist, you know, they're, they're, they're special. You know, God is not a respecter of persons except for the Calvinist. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In who? In Christ. And see, in Judges 9, verse 11 again, But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness? the sweetness of our Lord Jesus Christ and the testimony that is given in Scripture and my good fruit, we being ambassadors of the Lord, and go and be promoted over the trees? Verse 12, now here's where it gets interesting. Here's where it gets interesting. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. Come thou and reign over us. And naturally, John chapter 15, verse, verses 1 on to verse 7, right? Who's the vine? Who's the vine? John 15, verses 1 on to verse 7. I am the vine, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now are ye clean through the word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in the vine. In me. Excuse me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Pretty self-explanatory. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and are burned. Now wait a second. Wait a second. Look at what, that, what he said there. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, dried up, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and are burned. Hmm. Question. Did Jesus Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. No, he did not. No, he did not. Okay. Was the law still binding before the death, burial, and resurrection? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. In this dispensation, today, okay, God is not holding a gun into your head or Satan isn't holding a gun to your head, forcing you to do things. You've got to make the right choices. That's our part, you wicked Calvinist devil. Okay? That is our part. All right? And if you go to Lord His way, broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, call upon His name, and He save you and seal you, you're once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. Okay? Abiding in him, as far as salvifically, he abides in us on a permanent basis. Now, if we choose, if we choose, Calvinist, not to do what he says, we can lose health, we can lose provision, we can lose fellowship. Our salvation, we can't because it's not ours, it's his. Okay? Verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, 
and it shall be done unto you. And of course, heretics like, and we're, we're going to address that a little later, or it might be in the next video, or it might be in the next video, or whatever. Uh, but, okay, now, go back to Judges chapter 9, the vine. Jesus is the vine, right? Judges 9, now verse 13. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, God and man, okay, and go and be promoted over the trees? Now hold up. Jesus is the vine. He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Question. Is Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning today on the earth? Even atheists can answer that. Okay. All right. um, we are not building a kingdom today. There's the kingdom of God, which is spiritual. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Come here. Come here. That's not built by us. Who's the ones building the kingdom? Hell, hey, how you doing with the... Uh, how you, way, way are you giving up for Lent? Hmm? Way are you giving up for Lent there, buddy? John 6. John 6. Might be... Brad, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus is the vine. But right there in John... In, uh, Judges 9... Verse 13, it's like the vine said, uh, you know, wait, should I leave my wine which cheered God and man and go be promoted over you? John 6, 15 on to verse 21. John 6, 15 on to verse 21. John 6, 15 on to verse 21. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by faith, force to make him a king he departed again into a mountain himself alone but he's he's king kings lord of lords before the death burial and resurrection he was offering the kingdom of heaven which is the physical literal kingdom that will be in jerusalem yes 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 he was yes he was the king was on the earth but was he ruling and reigning at Jerusalem? No. And when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force, coerce, make him king against his own will, you stupid Calvinist! No. No, you, you're not stupid. No. Well, you're willfully ignorant. Yes, yeah, so stupid. But you, you got brains. But see, you're wicked. You're evil. You give people a God of coercion. God don't operate that way. Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. God's not a God of coercion, people. Watch out for the Calvinist. Especially the and the bad guy, <laughs> to every pun intended, from Dudley Do Right. And when even was now come, his disciples went down onto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid, but he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. And they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Willingly. No coercion, no force, you wicked Calvinists. Uh, and also, 
Look at verses 5 now. Backtrack a little bit. 5 on to verse... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 let's... Yeah. Verses 5 on to verse 14. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's look at that. Why were they taking him... Why did they want to take him by force? When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, John 6, verses 5 and verse 14, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he knew, for he himself knew what he would do. Seeing what Phil was going to say. And that's not Phil Robinson, I God forbid. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Shimon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. <laughs> what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. A lot of people. A lot of men. Okay, that's not. It says men. Not encompassing the number of the women and children. Okay? Keep that in mind. And why? I don't know. Maybe because the order is God, man, woman, child. Not God, woman, child, pet, man. Maybe. Might have something to do with it. Okay? And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples were, and to, and the disciples, excuse me, to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, they said unto his disciples, he, excuse me, said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Cool. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remain over and above unto them, uh, and that had eaten. Then, then, the, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. And we already read verse 15. So, they saw what? They saw what? They saw what? The miracle of the loaves. They saw the miracle of the loaves. John 6, 22 on to verse 30 now. The day following... When the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit, how there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, flattering titles, when camest thou hither? Look at what Jesus says. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles. Okay, they did. They saw the miracles. They saw. But what happened? Okay, they did. They saw the miracles. They did. It says so. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles. But, because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled, whose God is their belly, fleshly. 
Oh, really? Strain at a gnat and swallow the camel. They didn't come seeking the Lord because he was the Lord. No, like the rich young ruler. He said, it's like, why, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God, okay? But the rich young ruler, he didn't have the eyes to see. He, he only saw this. Same with these people. They saw the miracles. He said so right there. Whose God is their belly. <laughs> Fleshly. Carnal. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, being eternally minded. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then, okay, verse 26, ye saw the miracles. They saw the miracles. They saw a bunch of dudes with five loaves of bread, miraculously, and, and the fishies, uh, miraculously feed 5,000 people from five loaves that multiplied into 12 baskets full. Okay? Uh, that, that's a miracle. Okay? They saw that. But see, their God was their belly. Sounds like Christianity to me, don't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Verse 30. <laughs> you know, and we're going to look at this next. Our Lord, you know, it's like, what do you think? People. What, what, what? Is... They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. So what, what, what is uh, five loaves, uh, 12 baskets, two fishies, 5,000 people. Okay? It's like... <laughs> wow! <laughs> Today! Wow, huh? You can't pro... Dude, 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 dude. Here. You want evidence right here? But your God is your belly. Ye shall be as God. No good and evil. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe? What dost thou work? <laughs> wow! Wow! I mean, it, it, um, <laughs> John 10, 24 and 33, okay? John 10, 24 and uh, 33. <laughs> then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And I can only, I mean, our, I remember, our, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you know, but it's like, Oi, vey! What do I got to do for you people? It's like, the, you know, on the cross, when they said, Hey, let him come down from the cross and we'll believe. Talked to you about this before. What would have happened? Jesus on the cross. Oh, you want me? Okay, here I am. They put uh, taken their rocks and pelted him to death. People don't want the truth. And see, this is also proof contrary to what Calvinism teaches. God is not a God of coercion. Well, they're unelect. That's a cruel God. That's a God of cruelty who is coercive. And that is not the God of Scripture. 
Jesus answers them, Oy vey! I told you! And ye believe not, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Yeah, like five, feeding 5,000 guys with five loaves and two fishes. And then, and then, and then they saw the miracles, and they're like, well, what do you, what, what works do you do? Did I miss something? Here, let me, here, <laughs> did I miss something? Look at today. <laughs> I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That is, you can use that as a reference onto eternal security, but you got to remember at this present time, eternal security was not there because he had yet to what? Die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. Yes, you can. There are a lot stronger places to go, but if you had to, if you wanted to, if uh, on a fly, that's all you could think of, you could, but you would have to go a little, you know, you would have to go to the Pauline epistles to verify it for us today, okay? Just saying, all right? There are stronger places to go about that. But you got to remember, he had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. The law was still binding. Remember that. Verse 29. Uh, verse 28 again. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. <laughs> I and my Father are one in essence. I and my Father are one. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. The person is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. The Word made flesh. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. <sighs> uh, and let's read to verse 33. Of course. Jesus answered them, Many good works. Oh wait, verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Now, <laughs> uh, why did they do this? Because he called himself one part of a trinity? No. No. I and my Father are one. He's calling himself the Father. Jesus Christ is calling himself the Father there. Jesus is referring to himself as the Father. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He never said that. He didn't have to. He said, I am. That was enough. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man makest thyself God. The Jews understood that Jesus was calling himself the Father. Not a pagan, satanic, second person and a three person, but... Trinity. Nonsense. St stupid. Nonsense. Stupid. Nonsense. Uh, John 14. While we're touching this. John 14. 5 unto verse 11. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, 
Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the soul. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. And of course, 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16. I like that. I like, I like how our Lord did that. 3, 16. Yeah, in the Pauline epistles. And what is it addressing in 1 Timothy 3, 16? And without... Let's read 15 as well. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, John chapter 7. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verses 1 on verse 9. See, in Judges here, in Judges here, in verse 13, it's like, okay, 12, Jesus is divine. Yes. Yes. But in verse 13, the vine makes a statement uh the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Hmm. Is Jesus Christ ruling and reigning at Jerusalem right now? No. No. We, the body of Christ, are not building the kingdom. Satan is building the kingdom. Hmm. John 7, verses 1 on verse 9. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry. Jewry, not jewelry, brother. Love you. <laughs> because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren, therefore, said, oh, Jesus had brothers. Not by the same father, obviously, but the same mother. Catholic, to hell with your Mary. Because your Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Talked about in Jeremiah chapter 44. To hell with the Roman Catholic Mary. It's not the Mary of Scripture. Mary. Hey, didn't read that. That'll be in the description box for you. His brethren, therefore, said unto him, Mary had a lot of kids, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples may see thy works, may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the wild. For neither did his brethren believe in him. And the man's enemies? Are they of his own house? A prophet is not without honor, saving his own hometown. Brad eyes there. It's funny. People outside of America and the uh, analytics, I think, can verify that a lot of people outside of America watch these videos more so than the ones who are in America. Interesting. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. Your time is already always ready. You have today. The Lord could save you today. What are you doing? But what does Satan do? This is your time now. 
your best life now. Uh, saints, this isn't our best life now. The Lord could save you today. But see, you have to make the decision yourself. Look, Calvinist, you wicked dog. God does not decide for you. That is a God who is coercive. And that is not the God of Scripture. You have to make the decision. You do not save yourself. Absolutely not. God forbid. No. But you make the choice. Because if you didn't, you would be a robot. And God would be coercive. The world cannot hate you. Of course not. You belong to a clique. Worldly. Carnal. Of course. But me it hated. Why? Because I testify of it. That the works thereof are evil. I thought I, I had a video to do about these cliques. Especially within the King James Bible believing things. These high school cliques. But I don't think I'd be able to compose myself. So anyway. Verse 8, go ye up to this feast. I go not up yet to this feast, for my time is not yet full come. Not yet. And I do believe that Bibles mess up verse 8 and turn Jesus into a liar and where he says, I don't go up. I think I'm pretty sure about this. That the Bibles, such as NIV, ESV, John MacArthur's version, and whatnot, all take out um, yet to turn Jesus into a liar. I, I, I believe, I believe, he, I believe they do that. I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I could be wrong about that. Okay? Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet full come. Verse 6. My time is not yet come. John 2, John 2, verses 4 on to verse 10. I love this one. You, you, you Catholics, and you, you, uh. Jesus saith unto her, he's talking to Mary. He never said no to his mother. Catholics, you're taught that. You're taught that, that Jesus never said no to his mother. Right? Never said no to his mother. Well, he did. He did do it anyway. Yes, he did. But you guys say he never, like he was a little puppy dog or something like that. Okay? Jesus saith unto her, Woman! Oh! Mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Hmm. Yeah, never mind. Woman! What have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Hold your place. Judges chapter 9, verse 13 again. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go, pre go be promoted over the trees? Wine. What color is wine generally? Red. Not all wine is red. I know that. Okay? Mm. So, Jesus is the vine, but in Judges 9, verse 13, the vine said, Uh, should I leave this and go be promoted over you? Now, the Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven, yes. But scripturally, it was prophesied that they were going to reject. But yet he wouldn't be a fair God if he didn't at least offer it anyway. And we have seen now already, my time has not yet come. It's not my time yet. Not yet. Not yet. Hmm. His mother <laughs> saith unto his servants, Whatsoever I saith unto you, do it. Are you reading along with me? That's not what it says, does it? But see, that's what Catholics believe. That, you know, they put, here's Jesus, here's Mary. We don't, but yes, you do. And that's what you're taught. The queen of heaven. <laughs> yeah, she is. Your Mary is the queen of heaven. Read Jeremiah chapter 44 today, Catholic. 
from the scriptures. Don't worry, your hands aren't going to melt if you touch the scriptures. Your heart might, but your hands won't. Praise God your heart melt. Wake you up. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Whatever he says, not what I say, whatever he says. Catholics, whatever I say, he does. He's my little puppy dog. And there were there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing, containing two or three firkins apiece. She saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Now this is, this is actually pretty cool. This is really, 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 really cool. I, 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 this is awesome. Check this out. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. Check this out. This is, this is neat. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then they bring then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now, saved the best for last. Are you getting this now? You are, aren't you? I hope so. Spirits will identify. Judges 9, verse 13. Uh, let's 12 and 13. Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Hmm. Interesting. Save the best for last. His time had yet was not yet. But as we see in verse 10, the wine, the best wine, was saved for last. Isaiah 53, the best, saved the best for last. See, Christianity, this is your best life, best life, uh, best life now. They want you to have the best wine now. No! This is not it. This is not it. Our best life begins when we're dead and with the Lord. Save the best wine for last. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Uh, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and verse 9. See, when the Lord came here at his first coming, he came with a purpose. He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. But it's prophesied that they weren't going to accept. If he didn't do that, then he would not be a fair and just God. If No, he knew that they were going to reject him. But if he didn't do that at least offer, he wouldn't be fair. He wouldn't be just. He would be the Calvinistic God. He would. Because, hey, I didn't even give you the chance. Yeah, you were going to reject it anyway, but I didn't even give you the chance. Coercion. But see, when the Lord Jesus Christ came here first, he came here to do what? Surely he hath borne, verses 4 and verse 9, unto Isaiah 53. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem, 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 esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. That's what dumb means. It means not being able to speak. Okay. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? The Roman Catholic Church? 
Yeah. The ones who actually crucified him? But <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. See, his time has not yet come. And judges there. They go to the vine. The vine is the Lord. But it's not his time to reign and rule yet. He offered it. But he came here to die. Buried. Rise again the third day according to the scriptures. And shed his blood on the cross. To make the atonement for what? Our sins. My sins. Your sins. Okay? That's what he came here first for. Revelation 19. Now, see, at the second coming, at the second coming, it's not his time. It's not his time now. We're not the kingdom of heaven. God forbid, dude. The kingdom of heaven is not on earth right now. God forbid. <laughs> Revelation 19. Verses 11 on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and true, capital T. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, as where the uh, son of perdition in uh, Revelation 6.1 has a crown, okay? But the Lord, many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, the wine reference, and his name is called the seventh, the word, capital W, of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, reference unto him. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. I'm saying it that way purposely. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And guess, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Those armies that come down with him and it's coming. That's us. When we go up there, come up hither, we come back with him. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the Jesuit order. Okay. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of, King, King of kings and Lord of lords. This is when the Lord will come back, his second coming, and establish the kingdom of heaven, where he will rule and reign on earth for a thousand years, and during the kingdom of heaven it is all works. Okay? That is when the Lord's time is at his second coming. Okay? Oh, and the sword out of his mouth. Okay? Uh, uh, what is that? Ephesians six seventeen. Just, we've got to make these references here, brother, sister. Ephesians, what are you doing? Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation, knowing that you're saved, eternally secure, if you go to the way that he has prescribed, the elect way of the cross, okay? And take the helmet of salvation. Catholic, I'm going to heaven when I die. I know that. Because the Lord has saved me, sealed me. And the scriptures tell me I can know that, and I'm supposed to know that. Your church doesn't want you to know that, because guess what? You're not going. You poor, wretched creature, you. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, capital S, which is the lowercase w, word of God, the written word of God, the scripture, and of course, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit 
and of the joints and marrow. That's a person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. You can reference this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. And uh, soul, spirit, joints, and marrow are parts of a body. Okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? Now, you see here, dear people, we are going to be judged by the standard of Scripture. You people at the great white throne, you're going to be judged by this standard. The one that so many of you reject. Why do you think Satan and his church, Rome, has been so maniacal with their yea hath God said? Because this is the standard. Judges Chapter 9, verses 14 and 15 now. Did you see now about the vine? About, you know, well, what about verse 13? The vine, okay, the vine is the Lord. Instruction and righteousness. Instruction and righteousness. But the, the vine's like, well, why should I leave my wine, which cheereth God, Isaiah 53, and man, the redemption there, okay, did you see that? But now verses 14 and 15. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. Now in the other video where we go through judges, I think we do focus on this aspect of it, but we're going to hit it this uh, in this video as well. Why not? Okay. Um, bramble the word and variation thereof appears a total of five times in the scriptures in, <clears throat> in four verses. Okay? What a bramble. I was going to get uh, Webster's 1828 dictionary. Uh, that, uh, I, I, okay, well, one second. One second. Uh, instead, of, instead of yapping about it, uh, are the, uh, they're rolling from my Webster's 1828 dictionary. Bramble. Bramble. Uh, the raspberry bush or blackberry bush, a general name of the genus Rubus, of which there are several species. They are armed with prickles, thorns. Interesting. Thorns. They are armed with prickles, hence, in common language, any rough prickly shrub. Bramble. Thorns. Thorns. Very interesting. But the word bramble appears five times and variation, total of five, with variation, in four verses. Bramble. And according to Webster, there, bramble. Bramble. And we're going to look at the five times that bramble appears. Isaiah 34. All right? Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. We know that, scripturally speaking, the bramble is not good. But see, men will go to, okay, the olive branch, no, not yet, not yet, okay, we looked at that. The, um, the vine, okay, the fig tree, the fig tree was to be the what? The example, not the ruler. We don't rule over people, okay? The vine our Lord Jesus Christ, but his time is not yet. Okay? Okay? All right? So, what do men go to? The bramble that has prickly thorns. Isaiah 34, 11 on to verse 15. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, unclean birds, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. 
They shall call the nobles thereof of the kingdom to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. Dragons! Related to the red dragon, perhaps. You know, that, that old serpent, the dragon, Satan. Hmm. Dragons. Unclean animals. Hmm. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather her sh and, ga and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. And in Roman Romans, in Revelation 18, it talks about how Rome has become the hold for every unclean bird. Check your margin of reference there. Is there a reference for Revelation 18 from verses 11 on to verse 15 in your set of scriptures? Become the whole uh, habitation of every uh, hateful bird. I'm bradizing that because I don't have it memorized offhand. But huh? Huh. And also, Matthew uh, 13, one verse. Matthew 13, one verse. 22. Matthew 13, 22. Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke. Or, you know, the bone right there, the thing there. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he becometh unfruitful. The bramble. Prickly little thorns. See the tie-in? Uh, and, and let's look at the other one. Uh, Mark 4. Uh, bleh, 19. <laughs> Mark 4, 19. Mark 4, 19. And the cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the lusts of other things. Entering in. Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Mm. 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 Very, very interesting. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Let me see. My uh, might be getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Luke chapter six. Let me see. Ah, yes. Let's go back to uh, Judges nine, uh, verse fourteen. Again, the bramble. <clears throat> then all the trees. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. The bramble. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Hmm. Come and put your, what does that say? Come and put your trust in my shadow. And the bramble, prickly things with thorns and nettles, which the cares of the world that choke the, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Hmm? What is that a picture of? Luke chapter 6, 43 under verse 45. For a good tree bringeth, bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush 
gather they grapes. Not grapes, blackberries, raspberries, which are good, but not grapes. Mm. So a substitute for a grape. Are you getting the tie-in? The grape, the wine, leave my wine that cheereth God and man. The blood on the cross tie in. He it wasn't his time. He came to die. When he comes back at his second time, it's going to be time then. Okay, the best for last. This isn't our best life now. We go to be with the Father. Let's go. Are you getting the tie in? Are you getting it? Everything that is false that comes from Rome is an imitation. It's a counterfeit. It's anti. To replace and to be against. Look, look at verse 15 in Judges 9 again. And the bramble said unto the trees, look at the bramble, prickly little things, thorns and briars, stuff like that. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For thorns, things of the world, for of thorns men do not gather figs. Can't get blood from a stone, can you? Nor a bramble bush gather they grapes to tie in with the grapes, the wine, the blood, that kind of stuff. Okay? And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. I'm elect. I don't even have to, my I don't even have to have any faith. It's the Lord's faith is himself. <laughs> Stupid idiot. <laughs> Just believe and receive. I can save myself by my own belief. I've had the cookie. I've drank the wine. I belong to the Catholic Church. Let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedar of Lebanon. And Ezekiel 18, uh, 28, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy... Oh, wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary, sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by, thy, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire... From the midst of the And the Bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Every false and other way which we saints are supposed to hate will go up like a puff. Calvinism, Catholicism, free grace-ism, whatever ism out there. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Wow, huh? Wow, huh? Verse 45 in Luke 6. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. <laughs> usually, not all the time, usually, it's a good, good way to at least consider. 1 Corinthians 15, just one verse. 1 Corinthians 15, just one verse. Verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now right away you think of profanity. And that is true. But when you come around trying to take 
doctrine from another dispensation and make it pertinent salvifically today, those are corrupt communications. Okay? Someone telling you just believe and receive, okay, without scriptural repentance, that's corrupt communication, okay? That you got to go to the church building and eat a cookie and drink wine, okay? That's corrupt communication. That you are elect and others are elected to go to hell, a god of coercion, where you don't even have to believe or, or have faith of your own, uh, that's a god of coercion. That's corrupt communication. You get it? Galatians chapter 1. And this is what the bramble truly represents. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Gospel of Rome, the Gospel of Calvin, the Gospel of the Free Grace community, whatever, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the Gospel of Christ, the said mentioned, okay? But though we are an angel from heaven, do you know the God you think you saw, huh, you bloke? Not you from England, the other one, okay? Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be a curse. Yeah. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or God? These false religions, the bramble does. Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Calvinism. Ruckmanism. Lutheranism. The, Je the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Mormons. Charles Taze Russell. Um, um, Joseph Smith. <laughs> okay? For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay? Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Verses 9 on to verse 14. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. See, the bramble falls with the thorns and the snares, the prickly things... That's all about, hey, come and put your, put your trust in me. I'll be your protection. The fig leaves that they sow. Don't, don't strain at the net and swallow the camel. Figment, a picture of what man was doing to cover their own nakedness. The bramble is a perfect representation of that very thing. Luke 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. I go to, I'm part of the Roman Catholic Church. I am elect because I'm a Calvinist or I'm a black Hebrew Israelite or Brizraelite. You know, there's a version of black Hebrew Israelitism in England that the British are the lost tribes of this. <laughs> uh, Bullinger hit on that one too, okay? Nonsense, nonsense. Okay? You know, Calvinist. Hey, I'm elect. Anyone who tried to mark the messenger. Hey, well, I keep the commandments. Uh, what's his name? What's that idiot's name? Um, uh, lying fart. Okay? Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. With himself. Not to God. Notice that? God, I thank thee that I'm elect. That I'm special. I don't have to do anything. Just believe and receive. I'm so good. <laughs> the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Look at the snotty arrogance of that. Just like all the Calvinists, Catholics, 
Ruckmanites, Lutherans, any other ites out there you want to mention. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Look at my fig leaves. Those were requirements under the law. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. But the boast was supposed to be in God, not in the works themselves, which was a problem for a lot of people, still is today. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, the publican, went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Matthew 7, verses 21 unto 23. Sermon on the Mount. 21 unto 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. The actual physical, literal kingdom, which is not yet. Okay? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. Okay? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Look, you owe me. I've done all this. The bramble. We've hidden in the bramble with all the, the prickly things, right? Thorns and choke the word. The cares and deceitfulness of riches. Which Christianity moves so you can justify any kind of sin. <laughs> Look at the, the cross-dressing Calvinist. I'm elect. I'm, I'm safe without anything I gotta do. So hey! I'll put on a wig and dress like a woman and be a man and debate with other devils. That guy ought to be ashamed of himself. Both of them devils. Anyway, anyway, they, they know no shame. Verse 23. Then, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 5 on verse 7. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. And all their works they do to be seen of men. Representation of the bramble and the thorns and all that stuff. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You Catholics during this Lent stuff, you have your reward. Bravo. Okay? But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And where we verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And remember, brother, this is not you praying for the same brother the same thing. It's, Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed be the fruit of the womb. It's the prayers of the Missal. Stuff like that. Okay? All right? Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verses 7 on to verse 9. Ye hypocrites. Hmm. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. You, you fake, you Christians, you want to justify your sin. That's why you're going to Rome. That's why you think you, you know, you're going for Calvinism. That's why you want to believe and receive. Because those are variations of this satanic Christianity 
that you can find a justification to do whatever you want to do. And unfortunately, there are a lot of sly devils out there who have gotten into this nonsensical King James Bible-believing Christianity and are doing the same thing! And yoking themselves up with the Vatican. It's like, Pah! nuts. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The olive leaf, example, with the dove, God's grace after judgment. Immediately after sin, they were sowing fig leaves together. Romans 3, verses 19 on to 20. Romans 3. Just because some heretics don't rightly divide the word of truth, don't be afraid to use Romans 3 appropriately. 19 and 20. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in, the sight, in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. And he's making reference onto the law that's written in Scripture. But you've got to remember the laws of Rome, the laws of Calvin, <laughs> and, and the laws of, of the free gracers is don't live your life according to the Scriptures. Yeah, yeah. Galatians 3, 10 on to verse 14. Galatians 3, 10 on to verse 14. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. They mark the messenger. Got to keep the commandments. But you can't keep them. You wicked devil. Okay? And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the capitalist spirit through... And Colossians chapter 2, Colossians 2, verses 18 on to verse... 23. God touched this again. Because this is what the bramble offers. This is what Christianity offers. This is what Rome offers. This is what Calvinism, Lutheranism, Free Graceism, Ruckmanism, any kind of Christianity. This is what they offer. This is what they exude. Let no man beguile you in your reward of reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light intruding into those things which he hath not seen mainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head capital H referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the whale, why are ye, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Rome, with Lent. Islam, with their Ramadan. Okay? Tachna. Tachna. Amalna. Which all are to perish with the using. After the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom. With what wisdom? What wisdom? The fear of the Lord or the wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish? In will worship and humility. Will worship. Look at that guy. Wow, what a, what a devout Catholic. He's sticking to his guns during Lent. Yeah. Worshiping as well. Look at how look at how zealous he is 
for the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. You better you gotta be more like Brother So and so. Look at him. Look at how look at how he is. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? You, you follow me. You follow the Lord. Don't be one of these guys like the Dudley Do Right bad guy and copy and paste. And the six others like him before him. And will probably be many after him. Yeah. I counted up to six individuals who, in one way or another, copied a certain individual from out northeast and pasted on themselves. Six. And every single one of them, where are they? One's still going around, but kind of in the obscurity, really smooth, but... Um, Four of the six have virtually disappeared. One of them's running some stupid little news publication. But again, a copy and a paste. Yeah. Shoe of wisdom in will, worship, and humility? Yeah. And neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh? Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. Then we'll be done. Then we'll be done. Deuteronomy 30. Today, God is the one, God's the one who does the saving. Our part, our part is to believe on him. Our part is to make the decision. When someone comes around telling you that you don't have to make the decision yourself, but it's made for you because you're elect and so on, that is wicked, vile, rank, disgusting, vomitous, fecal heresy. And the Lord rebuke you. But see, as Israel, and every one of these Christians within Rome, within Calvinism, within Lutheranism, within Ruckmanism, okay, within free grace, it's what they're doing. But see, salvation comes by His grace today through our, our faith. Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 on verse 10. Pay attention. I want you to pay attention to this phrase, the Lord thy God will. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Verse 2. Choice. He notes choice. Calvinists take that out and say you don't. They tell you you have a God that coerces. Return. Make a choice. We are not the ones who saves our, save ourselves. No. But we have to make the choice. God doesn't choose for us. And when you got some Dudley Do-Right idiot out there telling you that God chooses for you, and you guys blindly just like, <laughs> Amen, amen, brother. What's wrong with y'all? That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. When what? They return. When they make the right choice. And this is during the law too. 
<laughs> and Calvin, well, that's different today. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. You have to make the right choices. Then that then the Lord thy God will. The Lord thy God will. You mark these in the scripture. You pay attention. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Okay? You don't see anything so far about him doing the believing for you. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Circumcise thine heart. What does that mean? Okay. Today, we have the circumcision made without hands. Okay. That means convicting your heart. Okay. It's not at all a reference unto the Lord believing, having faith for you. And the Lord thy God will bring, uh, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. That's not coercive there because of look of what we have already read, what he has already done, and they will be circumcised, pricked, or cut. That's what that's talking about. It's not a coercive, you're going to believe because I'm going to do it for you. That's satanic heresy. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. And on them, that, on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and, all, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord thy God, for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken, Calvinism, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou, reign over us. And the bramble was very willing. And the bramble said unto the, unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out from the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Israel will get to a point eventually where they will realize and recognize the Lord thy God will. But not yet. That is going to be it for this video today. Um, Lord willing, tomorrow we got, got the notes right here. I'm going to talk about the specific of the fig tree, but this was something that just had to... What was that? So that had to be addressed today. Lord gave this last night, so here you go. Please keep us in your prayers. We, excuse me, we don't know if we're going to make it this month. <laughs> but yet the Lord has always gotten us through. Please keep us in your prayers and please pray for one another. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Hopefully, hopefully we learned something today. Okay? We will see you in the next video. Got to get this uploaded. Praise the Lord. <laughs>